Hello, people. Welcome back to another episode of The Process. Today, I will be breaking down how I work some of my magic when it comes to editing my vocals. And as the example for today, we're going to be going through the vocals of Zaku, one of the hot singles from my new mixtape, uh, Drill Music, coming soon. Okay, so this is my popular request, especially from uh, our good friend, Flim, who's embarking on a rap career of his own. And so he wanted to know how I edited some of my vocals. And I'm sure some of you guys would be interested as well. So now I'm kind of just winging it because I normally I haven't really explained this this part before. So I'm going to be winging it a bit. Look at how crazy this shit looks. Look at all the effort I put into this. You got, now you guys see. <laughs> this shit's crazy. Um, okay. So before I really get started, explaining my process of editing my vocals um the first thing i want people to know is that i i used to edit all my vocals in adobe audition 1.5 like which is like an old like prehistoric version um but like robot music robot music 2 most of that was done on Adobe 1.5, which is kind of amazing looking back at it because it's such a primitive, <laughs> it's such a primitive uh, audio editing and recording software, but you know, I made it happen. But recently, um, probably up until, up until the, what, Robot Music 9002, like maybe halfway, like when I was halfway finished with that, I transitioned into using FL Studio to edit my vocals because um, it's just it's a lot more convenient. The interface is um, the FL Studio interface is just a lot more. It makes editing vocals a lot easier because it's it's so much easier to um, go through different effects and plugins and keeping everything like uh, vi visually organized like. Uh, Right here over on the right is loading up. This is my slow computer, by the way. This is like my old computer. So it might take a while to do certain things. So yeah, it's a lot easier to keep track of, of, of shit in FL Studio than it is in Adobe. At least in my opinion, right? It, I, it just feels like FL Studio is a lot more sleek as far as like doing stuff like this. So that's why I transitioned from Adobe to this but one thing about me when i like like my heart and soul is, is so intertwined with adobe what i do is i still record in adobe 1.5 and i do my noise reduction and compression in adobe 1.5 and then i save every individual vocal and load it into fl studio and then i do all the rest of the editing like that now you don't have to do it like like you don't have to do it the exact same way that i do it it's just that um i have so much history with adobe 1.5 and it's like it's, it's, it's just hard to break certain habits but fl studio has its own compression and noise reduction um plugins so you don't have to use adobe for that you can record in fl studio um you can do compression in FL Studio, like if I can get an example real quick, uh, like right there on, right here, you, you oh look, wrong shit came up. Uh, like right here, you have one of FL Studio's compression plugins. Uh, so even though I do my compression and noise reduction in Adobe, you can do the same shit in FL Studio. Um, so I'm not going to explain that, but just, just briefly, like as far as like the noise reduction thing, I'll give you like a little visual representation of what I'm talking about. Um, Cause that's kind of important. Let's take the first vocal track, like the main, like the first verse vocal track, right? And let's bring up Edison. So what noise reduction does is it gets rid of like the background noise 
but you have to isolate that noise first to create a profile for it. So the plug, so that the, the, the plugin knows what sounds to reduce, right? So this is just an example. So this is the verse from Zaku. Everything is already done on it. So it's kind of like, you're not gonna really hear a change. I just want to show you how to do it. Oh, hold up. Beat cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, bitch on Bruce Lee with the high kick. Air lot, that's the hot box. I can't elevate my eyelids. Laser beam like on Star Fox. God damn, hold up. <laughs> Food, bitch, I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. Air lot, that's the hot box. I can't elevate my. So that's that's the raw vocal right there. Like the the only thing that like that's how it sounds raw. The only thing that's up there is the compression and the noise reduction from Adobe 1.5. But again, you can do that all in FL Studio. So this is how it sounds raw. Cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, bitch, I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. Air lot, that's the hot box. I can't elevate my eyelids. Laser beam like on Star Fox. Falco was on fly shit. Man, on skybound, you can't intervene. Okay, and so, like, if I was going to do noise reduction in FL Studio, like, now, normally when you record, right, you're gonna see like like you see how like this is the noise. This is me, me rapping, right? But everything is already cleaned up. I cleaned everything up in Adobe, like, like I said. But normally you would see like little noise right here, like like little just just little spikes here and there. Normally that's what you would see, like prior to cleaning it up. And so you would highlight this area, right? Because this area is gonna be basically what the mic is picking up outside of you rapping like anything right here is going to be what the mic is like like the, the the sound of the room the ambiance of the room you know um so what you would do is you would highlight like an area outside of the main vocal spot and just just try to make sure that it's an area that's like completely silent like, don't catch yourself, like, coughing or something. Or make sure it's, like, you're not doing anything. The only thing being recorded is the is is the the noise of the room with nothing else. Just whatever's in the room. And you will highlight, like, around this area. Um, And you would go to clean up the noise, which is, like, this toothbrush-looking icon here first thing you do is you acquire a noise profile so again you highlight the area you highlight the area where you're not rapping you like just in fact you could just like really what i do is i'll go ahead and record just the sound of the room first and foremost you know i remember when i used to rap with the other guys i uh, I would always say, let's have a moment of silence <laughs> so I can record the, 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 the sound of the room, the ambiance of the room. And that way I knew I had exactly what I needed. And so after you get that isolated, you acquire a noise profile for it like, like this. And what that does is when you highlight your actual vocals or use that effect like use that profile on your vocals what it does is it reduces anything that sounds like the noise profile that you isolated from whatever you selected out of that audio clip and so essentially what it does is it helps to reduce the background noise so that your vocals come in more clear but again i've already done all this in adobe it's just that again i do i do the compression and noise reduction in adobe and i do everything else in FL studio but you know i wouldn't really suggest that because my method is kind of convoluted to be honest <laughs> so i was just 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 using what's in fl studio but th that's how you do it and as far as compression is concerned they have multiple compression uh plugins that that you can use um like here fruity compression 
Um, oh yeah, and and, by, and I might like double compress <laughs> my vocals just depending on like like what type of sound I'm going for. So yeah, I compressed it in Adobe, but I also compressed it in FL Studio. Just just depending on the sound I'm going for. I do a lot of crazy shit. <laughs> okay, so that now that that's out of the way, we get to the fun part. Now everything else is just what I do in FL Studio. So. Let's start with the first verse, right? Let's let's get that. So over here, you can see these are all the vocals put together. So uh, follow the mouse. Shiron, that's the beat. That's the intro right there. This area is the hook. That's the first hook. That's the second hook. Um, <laughs> these are like little ad, like a little ad lib for the hook. This is the first verse. The talk overs for the, the first verse. Um, I forgot what this is. This must be like a this must be like a, an effect or something. Um and no, nah, that's a um automation clip, probably to uh reduce the volume of a specific area. Um second verse, second verse talk overs or ab libs, whatever. Um oh wait, no 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 okay, I forgot. Yeah, uh it's kind of hard to explain this because I, ha I have my own way of labeling shit. But, like, this is the first verse. And all this right here is the second verse. It's just, it's split into two. Uh, VB1 stands for uh, verse B, first vocal. VB2, verse B, second vo vocal. VBAB, verse B, ab lib. Right, that's how I that's how I label shit, and so VB and BC are really just the first. I mean, the second verse is just that the second verse is like split into two parts. I kind of got lost there. Um, and hook EX, that's the second part of the hook. But then, 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 yeah. I'm kind of like remembering shit as I'm going along. So yeah, I'm if I sound like I'm lost, it's because it's been a while since I looked at this shit. And uh, these are like more automation clips and whatnot. But we're gonna try to we're gonna try to try to keep it simple. I don't wanna like overcomplicate shit. So let's look at the ver the first verse, right? So let's give it a listen to real quick. Let's go to it, single it out, and all that. Put the spotlight on this shit. So this area right here is the first verse. Okay, so the first thing you will notice is why do I have three vocals, right? It's one verse, but it's three vocals stacked up. And see, this is a very common practice in in uh, rap is to stack your vocals because stacking your vocals can do many different things. Um, it can increase the volume of the, of the uh, vocals. It can be used to increase the presence of your voice it can give your voice a more chorusy um dynamic exciting sound um one of the groups that stand out to me as far as like really utilizing uh, vo uh vocal stacking is bone thugs and harmony and they really take it to the extreme sometimes especially like flesh and bone like you'll really hear like his shit being stacked in a very unique way. Like you'll even hear it where it's like you, like you can tell like one, one vocal was done in like a higher pitch voice and the other one was done in, like a lower pitch voice. I don't do shit like that. Um, when I, when I 
record my vocals and my verses, I typically do it all in the same way. But even though I do it like that, stacking it still gives it a more dynamic sound because you can never say a verse the exact same way, right? Like, let me just kind of try to single one out real quick. So VA1, this is the lead vocal right here. Hold up. Oh, god damn. Old ass computer. Big cannon never roll without it. Then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, bitch. I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. And you can already hear the vocals on, I mean, the effects on it, like the reverb and shit like that. But that's how it sounds isolated. But now listen to these two together. Big cannon never roll without it. Then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu. Bruce Lee with the high kick, Al Lock, that's the hot box. I can elevate my eyelids. You see what I if you listening close, you can tell what I did. So see, this is a typical thing that I do when I make my when I edit my vocals. Now see, VA1 is my lead vocal. That's the one that's the loudest. That's the one that's out in front. And it'll usually be in the centered position of the audio field. Um, because if you know anything about audio editing, you know, you can take any vocal and you can, uh, change like what side of the stereo field that is on. Let's look over to the left here where you see VA1, VA2, VA3 again. Now you notice that VA1 is assigned to the seventh channel of the mixer. It, I, I mean the, the seventh track of the mixer, uh, of the mixer. And VA2 and VA3 are assigned to 8. Now, but also look further to the left. You see how I have these little knobs turned, right? So VA2 is leaning to the left by 50%. So I tune VA2 to the left. To, so by itself, let me see if I can get a little... You notice how you hear it mostly on the left. And here's VA3. Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. I got I have that one assigned to the right of the stereo field, basically. And again, what this does is it just gives the vocals a more full sound it gives the ver the, the the verses a more like in my opinion a more dynamic full exciting sound because you have the lead vocal taking charge in the middle and then you have two more sort of in the background not only not only tuned to different sides of the stereo field but also turned down because you notice um VA1 is at 50% in terms of its volume. That doesn't sound high, but it's because I have it compressed and like the, the compression preset I have on it makes it a lot louder. So I had to turn it down, but you'll still notice that it's higher than the background vocals, right? Like these are tuned to 40%. Wait, wait, oh shit. I didn't even notice that. So <laughs> Damn. So, so VA2 is set to 40%, VA3 is set to 36%. Um and I'm pretty sure the, the the reason why I probably did that was because of the ad libs being tuned to the right side. So I probably did that to just to get the ad libs more space to breathe. Um so the ad libs and VA3 are tuned to like the same side of the stereo field. That's probably why that's probably why I turned VA3 down even further than VA2, even though they're both background vocals. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the main tricks that I use to give my verses um, a, a nice, a nice full, exciting sound, a, a, a robust sonic sound. <laughs> oh Lord. And you can do many variations of this. Um, again, you don't have to do exactly what I do. You, you can play around with this. 
you can stack four vocals, two vocals, five vocals. You can have one and copy it. You can stack none. You know, some people have the type of voice that doesn't even require stacking. You know, I think stacking is really more for people who, who don't have um, a, a, a great voice to begin with. I mean, I, I guess not not to say you don't have a great voice but i think some people just have a voice that's just by itself is just so good you don't need to but i think even with people like them like it can only enhance what they already have you know just using bone thugs and harmony as an example again you know busy bone is someone with a very unique um distinct voice he's someone who really wouldn't need vocal stacking but you still hear him using it you know um, but yeah, if, if you're someone and you don't, you don't have a very, a very distinctive voice that stands out, you definitely want to utilize vocal stacking because even some of the best use this to give their verses and their vocals, um, a better overall sound. Okay. So let's, let's get to the, the specifics, the specifics of what I'm doing to each individual, uh, vocal track. Um, I'm kind of lost again. So we're going to go back to the first verse, right? So again, the main vocal is assigned to track seven and the background vocals are assigned to track eight. The ad libs are assigned to track nine. Keep that in mind. So we're going we're gonna to look at seven first. So these are the effects that I put on the vocals. Ignore the Edison. I was just using it as an example. So, and FL Studio has a lot of different effects. I try to keep shit simple, but this is basically what I did. Let's start from the top and work our way to the bottom. Um, so the one of the main things you're going to want to do is you have to equalize your vocals, right? And so this is what the main vocal of the first verse lo looks like in terms of like how it's equalized. Now, one of the main things you'll notice is that the low end is turned down and the high end is turned up. And that's, that's how I achieve my particular sound. And... From what I understand, this is a very typical practice because with most vocals, bass tends to get in the way. Um, I'm not going to save this because I'm going to fuck some shit up trying to show, show you guys. So, um, I mean, the song is already done, so it doesn't matter. Um, but I just want to, I'm probably going to fuck this up beyond, <laughs> beyond repair trying to give you examples. But, um, so just pay attention to how it sounds when I turn the bass back up, right? Again, this is the low end, which is the bass of your voice. I'm turning it back up. That really don't sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because everything is already so damn edited up, right? But just notice the difference when I actually turn it back down. Now, it's subtle, but the difference is when I turn the bass down, it sounds like my vocals are kind of floating within the song itself right um and when the bass is turned up it's almost like at least to me i can almost hear a guy rapping into a mic <laughs> right like that's that's almost how it sounds to me it's like i can kind of hear that that imbalance i can hear the impurities of it clearer as far as like how it clashes with the with the beat but when i turn the bass down it sounds like the the vocals merge better with the actual instrumental
another thing though is over here with the background vocals, right? Now the bass is really turned down over here. But what happens when we turn it up? Now it's very noticeable there. Now see with your background vocals, you want to take it to an even more extreme as far as like turning down the bass. Cause see what you notice is when I turn the bass of the background vocals up, it's a lot more noticeable that I've stacked my vocals. When I turn it down, it's there, but it's so subtle that it all that like you, you almost can't even tell that I stacked my vocals. So when I when I do vocal stacking for verses, I like it to be subtle not completely unnoticeable but i like it to be subtle and so when i do background vocals again look at the how like the extremes in, in terms of like how much the the uh low end is turned down and even the mid right because to just to break it down um you know this area from one to two to about three is the low end this four five area is the mid and this six seven area is the high end right and so with background vocals i turn i turn that like i lower the bass and the mid that way the background vocals don't get aren't so um prominent that you hear it too much where it's like clashing with the main vocal you know it's meant to complement the main vocal not to overshadow it and not to stand side by side with it it's it's like it's, it's just backup and but the thing is as far as like lowering the, the bass for your your main or lowering the low end for your main vocal you don't want to go too too far because once you start sliding it really in right here, you're lowering the mid and like your verse is, is going to sound like really shallow. It's not going to have like a full, like, like if you, if you take it too far, it's just your, your verse is, is going to sound like your vocals are going to sound weak. See, you still need some mid and bass. But not too much, you know. And the high end is very important. Um, now, what I typically do is, like, as far as, like, this particular plug-in, I'll lower the... I, now, I'll lower the extreme end of the high end because excuse me because what the high end does i think it it, it it brings out the 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 best parts of your vocals but further and further into the high end you get um you get like the the like these abrasive s sounds like and you got to be careful with that like just for example listen like i'm raising the seven up and the six like this is the high end you you hear it's like it's it's abrasive it's grating to the ears and so you got to balance that too but you don't want to go too far because it'll take some of the glow out of your vocals. See, now it sounds more muddy. It doesn't sound as clear. You know, that high end makes it sound clear. But you don't want to go so far to where it, it, it begins to sound like, like uh, gritty and and um you know 
uh, uh, almost annoying to the ears with the. <laughs> oh man, this is crazy. Like for this particular verse and song, like this is the perfect balance. And you, you'll be surprised how long I spend just tweaking this shit. Like moving the, the six over here or over here. Like let me, maybe I got to lower this, right? Or too much, or uh, it's got too much bass or not enough and lower the, <laughs> like you really got to play around with it because one thing you got to keep in mind is every instrumental is different. And it also is determined by like, your vision for the song and the sound that it requires so don't think you can just do it one time and have a preset i mean you can have presets just for like something to work by right to make it easier to, to get it close to what you need it to be um but my but what i notice is like i always end up having it to tweak the the equalizer because the vocals interact with every beat differently. And every song has a different sound that has to be achieved. I mean, I have certain tendencies and preferences, but I always try to approach every project with the understanding that, you know, I'm going to have to improvise sometimes. I'm going to have to tweak and do things differently, even as far as like equalizing reverb and whatnot. And try different things and, and, and things of that nature. Um, but just looking at the background vocals one more time. Again, you notice the, the high end is, is also reduced. And, and that's another thing you got to be careful with the background vocals. The same way that the, the low end can get in the way, the high end too. Because you don't want all that, that high end to accumulate. Because as it accumulates, again, you get that, that rough sound on your vocals but if you don't have enough high end it sounds muddy and it doesn't have that same like clear clarity um that same kind of uh clear sound to it so let's talk about reverb a little bit so the reverb is uh the, the reverb is um, is an effect that's very commonly used on vocals in just about every genre of music. It makes your vocals sound like like it's it's like it's it's in it's, it's almost like creating an artificial space for the vocal, right? I'm gonna have to isolate it so you can really tell what I'm talking about here. Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, but I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. Air lot, that's the hot box. I can't elevate my eyelids. You notice how it's like a subtle echo in the background, like my my vocals like bouncing off the wall and echoing and shit. That's because this reverb is kind of acting as an artificial space for my vocals and you can you can create different sounds by adjusting the parameters of the reverb they got they got all kind of different uh reverb plugins you can use um this is reverb 2 they have another one in fl studio but they also have more you can download and add to the program so this is another one um that you can play around with so for like this is the verse obviously um right here you see this knob called wet this is the, the probably the most one of the most important knobs to play with as far as reverb because the wet knob is basically de going to determine how intense the reverb settings are applied to your vocals right so right now it's on 20 percent Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, bitch, I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. So it's noticeable, but it's not extreme. But listen to how it sounds when I turn this up to 50%. 
Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, bitch, I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. It's a lot more noticeable. It's overwhelming. <laughs> so you got to be careful with that. But again, it's another one of those things where how much you need is going to depend on the vision you have for the song. You know, I remember I was listening to a, um, a Lil Peep song a while ago. And I was listening to the verse. I was like, yo, this verse got a lot of reverb on it. Like, <laughs> like I don't really do my shit like this. But it was cool the way he did it. So uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm telling you how I do shit. But everybody's different and unique. So when I listened to Lil Peep on one of his songs, I was like, yo, that shit is cool. Though. Like, he put a ton of reverb on his, on his verse. I don't normally do that. I save that for the hooks usually. But it all depends on the vision you have. And the vision I had for Zaku was, you know, the verses don't need a lot of reverb, you know, but it's definitely going to need some because it's a space giant robot themed song. So it's got to have this almost uh, atmospheric eth eth ethereal sound, you know. So that's why I definitely had to put some in there. And it's a lot of different knobs here you can tweak to get different sounds and shit like that. Um, like right here, you see how it like, again, like I said, this is, you're creating artificial space. You see how that, that thing is, is changing from like a wide room to a small cylinder. Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set. You know, when you change that, that little cylinder to like its smallest point. The reverb sounds more contained, and when you make it larger, the reverb is like what, like, like it sounds like it's expanding over a wider range of of space. Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. So that's just one of the things you can do. Um, also, the decay time that that affects the like echo of it. Like, how far does the echo of the reverb extend outwards? So if you turn it up, it can get pretty extreme. Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, bitch, I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. And a lot. See, you, you heard it kind of just, it, it was extending way out to the point of uh, being kind of ridiculous. And, um, yeah, man, you just, just play around with these different knobs. I'm going to be honest, I don't know exactly what all of them do specifically. I just kind of fuck with it. I just kind of fuck with shit and kind of just roll with what sounds good. Um, but yeah. What about on the, hold up, let me check this. Uh, oh, that's kind of surprising. The backup vocals have less reverb than the main vocal. It's kind of unusual for me, but whatever. So this is the Sound Goodizer. <laughs> and it's such a, Sound Goodizer is a, is it pretty much exactly what it's what it, it 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 sounds like? It just makes stuff sound better, and I don't know how this shit works. It's a very simple plugin, but it just makes stuff sound better. Like it makes stuff sound louder and clearer. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but I do use it quite a bit. Whether I'm making the beat. Or editing vocals and they have different like it, it's not a complex plugin you got a b c d <laughs> and this knob here that it's turned very low actually like it can, you, you, you can turn this mug up but i use i usually just put a little bit on my vocals like just a little bit a little smidge just to give it a little boost like i it, it's it's so it's such a small amount that you probably won't even notice it. Let me see. Oh, like, I'm, I'm gonna turn it off. Big cannon never roll without it. Then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu, bitch. I'm Bruce Lee with the high kick. Now I'm gonna turn it on. Big cannon never roll without it. Then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle. I kind of hear it. Like, it sounds clearer and a little bit louder. But again, you can you can turn it to the extreme too. Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We but I think as you turn it up, you get diminishing returns. It begins to sound distorted and whatnot. That's why I tend to, like, I tend to use it at around, like, like, 
it'll be anywhere from like here to there because as you turn it up it just makes it sound distorted you know so this is like to me this is the sweet spot you know it just, it just gives your vocals like a like just a free boost in sound quality that's how i look at it and also fruity compressor um so again compressing your vocals is very important um in a nutshell one of the major things that it does is it kind of evens everything it evens everything out i'm glad i got this edison up like you notice how like you look at you look at my vocals right and notice how it, it just it looks as far as like the 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 wavelengths right look how it looks so balanced but that's not how it is naturally. When you usually when you usually record a vocal, you're gonna see more like differences and extremes as far as like certain areas popping out more than others. When you compress it, it keeps everything to a certain level. That way, um, your verse won't be sounding like uneven, or your vocals won't be sounding uneven, like louder at certain points and and softer at others like compression really kind of keeps everything on as e on, on a very even level again like oh i hit the mic my bad but again without compression those vocal waves will look a lot more chaotic as far as like like how far they extend out like like of course you know there's like little you know little peaks here and there right but it's not going to be all out and, like, and crazy, right? Like, there's still a balance. Like, like, like right here, look. You notice how it doesn't go much further past that extreme. That's compression. It keeps the vocals balanced. It's very important. And again, sometimes I double compress my shit. But the compression that I do in FL Studio is mostly for, like, sound. I like to use... um. I like to use a preset called um, Complete Mix. It just, to me, it brings the most out of the vocals and you don't, I mean, yeah, out of the vocals and you don't have to like turn it up to the extreme to get to get it to, to get as loud as you need it to. When you, when you put on that Complete Mix preset, um, it, it, it really just makes, like outside of like balancing the vocals, it makes it much louder and easier to, um, in my opinion, easier to edit alongside everything else because because you don't feel like you gotta really turning up turn it up to the extreme and whatnot. It's already like loud, and from there now you're gonna have to turn it down after you do that. Like, look, I'm gonna turn the compre the compressor off, right? Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade on my side chick. We can set a whistle kung fu. It's a lot lower, but turn it on. Big cannon never roll without it, then a switch blade. You see, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big difference. Now, of course, you could turn the compressor off, the, the compress, the compressor off, and just turn it up using one of the knobs, like over here on the uh, channel rack or the mixel the mixel, the mixer track, right? Cause this knob right here also affects volume. So you got different ways to turn it up. But I, according to my ears, it just seems like when you try to turn it up using the knobs, it, it, it sounds like forced sometimes. Like I feel like there's more distortion when you try to use the knobs to turn it up as opposed to compressing it. And using that to give it its loudness. And then doing the rest with the knobs. Like having to turn it down and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's usually how... I don't always do it that way. I don't always double compress it. Because really that's something I've been experimenting with lately. With the with the past like couple of songs. But it's been working out ever since like I think uh, I Love to Cry or some shit like that. Okay, so... Um, this shit taking longer than I thought. <laughs> it's a lot to this shit. This is fun though. I like this. Um, so let me see. 
just briefly, I'm gonna talk about the ad libs, right? I still struggle getting those getting those sounding right to be honest. So the ad libs in a rap track is basically like the the, the little oohs and ahs that you say to compliment the verse. You know, the Migos, for example, they're really good at this. Um, but going further back, you can look at someone like Lil John with the, yeah, okay. Like you say a bar and then you say like, yeah. <laughs> or even better example, OJ the Juice Man. Like his shit was, hey. Like he'll say, uh, went up in the trap, had a whole brick. Like that that's an ad lib. Oh, hold up. I forgot to turn this shit. Okay. Now sometimes you might just repeat what you already said. With the high kick. Like there. Wow. Wow. Pew pew. Also fly shit. Negative. <laughs> that was good. Negative. <laughs> And much like my verses, I tend to stack my ad libs too. Because it has that same effect of giving it a more dynamic, full, interesting sound. Uh, kind of really listening to it now, it kind of reminds me of like that, that Gotenks sound. You know, in Dragon Ball Z, when Goten and Trunks fuse, or when Goku and Vegeta fuse, and how it sounds like two voices mashed together. It kind of sounds like that, but to a lesser extreme. Got my side chick. With the high kick. Wow. Especially there. Wow. Like, that was... <laughs> right? And that's just something else that I like to do and play with. But yeah, the ad libs are just the, 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 the little uh, words... And sounds that you add in to complement the actual verse. And I, I'm telling you, do not underestimate the power of ad libs. I mean, because sometimes they can really bring a, a a verse to life, right? And some some don't need it. Some verses need it more than others. It just depends. You know, again, it's about your vision and Truth be told, some verses don't even really work with ad libs because ad libs kind of require space, a lot of space between things being said. That's why, again, using Bone Thugs as an example, um, you don't really hear them using a lot of ad libs because there's not a lot of space in their verses. That because there's a bit of sick of the they always going fast and shit. They utilize talkovers much more then ad libs is what i noticed and just briefly because this song doesn't have talkovers talkovers is just like you're saying what you're saying in the in the in the verse but like just parts of it right um so you notice like right here i say uh because i said switch blade that's my side chick but instead of saying it after i say it i would say it on top of it and i might say it on, in, in a different pitch to just adding a little spice to the verse. You know, like that's what I know is what Bone Thugs do more than anything else. They they really go crazy with the talkovers more so than ad libs. So again, it's about the type of artist you are and the vision that you have for the song. I I zoned out. Okay. <laughs> oh God, this shit be looking like calculus sometimes man i'm glad i took the time to learn this shit though like where do i start okay so let's look at let's look at the hook oh oh lord <laughs> oh lord why did i chop it up like that the I've why did i chop this shit up i'm trying to remember why i did it like this i chopped this motherfucker up why I chop it up like that? I don't know. But that's not important. Ready, let's 
Now what you'll notice about the hook is it's four vocals stacked instead of three. And the vocals that are stacked, the background vocals aren't as subtle. And that's done on purpose because I want the hook to have a, a more fuller sound, a more um, chorusy sound than the verse. Because you want the hook to be distinguishable from the verse. Right, and typically what what artists would do, the hook would be louder, or it'll have more vocal stacking, and it or it'll have a, a a greater amount of effects applied to it, just to make it sound more distinctive from the verse. Let's isolate this shit. I'm blowing purple as I go. If you can shoot, you can ride too. Stay on the ground cause I got to. I'm going over the top. Woo! Bitch, I be burning like bot suit. You with the homies, I got you. My head be spinning like top suit. I'm blowing purple as I go. So you can. <coughs> Damn. You can. <coughs> Something stuck in my throat. <laughs> okay, so you can hear. The more extreme, uh, like effects being applied, vocal stacking and whatnot. Like, uh, like look at the reverb here. Notice how the reverb is set to thirty percent instead of the twenty percent that's on the main, uh, the main. I mean, the uh, first verse, right? This is the equalizer, you know, very similar to the verse itself, probably a bit less bass, but it's very similar. I added a chorus as well, though. Now, what the chorus does, the chorus, in a nutshell, the chorus kind of gives vocals the stacking effect without actually stacking vocals. So you can imagine that when you combine the two, like I do, like I've already stacked the vocals, but I'm also adding a chorus, a chorus effect. So that's making the hook sound a lot more hooky, <laughs> to put it in, in, in dumb, dumb motherfucker terms. <laughs> oh God. So yeah, the the equal the equalization is about the same, but you notice there's more v, there's more reverb. I added the chorus effect, which again is just like in a just basically like extra stacking. It's like it's like art. It's basically artificial stacking. That's the best way I can describe it. It's like artificial uh, stacking. Um, the also use the compressor here. The compressor here. Um, sound goodizer. Except it's uh, it's said about. The sound goodizer is a bit higher. Um, I was gonna add delay to it, but I, I think uh, I turned that off. There's probably delay on the backup vocals though. But yeah, not too much difference from how the main, or rather the the uh, first verse was um, edited or mixed. Still has very similar. Um, equalizing edits just has a chorus on top of it similar reverb you know just more just like 10 percent more wet more damp you know just playing around with the different knobs and whatnot more uh high cut low cut all the way down but that's really just me playing with shit and just listening to what i like there's no really no rhyme or reason for it some of the things I did around this area, it was just me just kind of doing, like, just playing with shit and whatever sound good, I roll, I roll with it. I do a lot of that. Um, but the same compressor effect, uh, uh, full mix, I mean, complete mix, I'm sure. If I'm not mistaken. Um, 
But uh, now you'll notice that hook one and hook three are assigned to Mixer Channel Three. So they're like you could you could consider those like the lead hook vocals. And hook two and hook four are assigned to four because they're the backup. But uh now I didn't apply the chorus to these. I turned that off. There's no delay. But much like with the actual verses, the backup hook vocals also have a greatly reduced low end and mid and mid area <laughs> brain fart. The background hook vocals have a greatly reduced low end and even a reduced mid area, right? So it's mostly high end. So that all of this doesn't get in the way. Because too much is going to just have it sounding too crazy. Much like I do with the background vocals for the verses. So a very similar philosophy with the hooks. You got the lead vocals in hook one and hook three. And the background vocals in hook two and hook four. And um, these ad-libs. I'm blowing purple in his go. If you can shoot, you can ride too. Stay on the... Now, I know that uh, these are labeled as hook A. I mean, hook ab, as in ab lives, but they're actually talkovers. Like, I'm just saying, Zaku, ride too on top of it. So it's not really an ab lib. It's more of a talkover. So I mislabeled that. But that's all that is. All that is is just talkover for the hook. I'm blowing purple in Zaku. To emphasize specific parts of the vocals. Zaku. Ride too. Zaku. Ride two. Got two. Woo. Woo. Now you notice there's a. It's, it's very much turned down. Cause I didn't want it to get in the way, but that's how talk talkovers are anyway. You got to turn them down. Um, again, the, the depends on your vision for the song, but for this case, I wanted it turned down because I didn't want it to get in the way, especially especially since it has such a strong echo on it, right? And to get the echo effect, I use a combination of delay bank and fruity delay too. Um, and what these do, these basically create echo effects. Um, you got to play around with the timing and like, just for example, like this changes like the timing of the echo. Cause you might want the echo to be like, Hey, 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 or Hey, 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 that's what, it, <laughs> that's what the uh, timing is for. And the cut that affects how long the echo will reach out. The higher it is, the longer the echo will extend. Like if it's high, it'll be like, hey, 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 hey. If it's low, it'll be like, hey, hey, hey. Right? And the volume over here determines the volume of the echo. So that'll determine like how loud the echoes are. So, you know, you can about, you, you can about get what that would do, right? So. I don't have to explain that. Um, but for some reason, I use the combination of both of these. I typically don't do that. Like, I'm looking at it like, damn, what the hell was that? <laughs> I'm looking back like, damn, what the hell was I doing? But uh, it worked out. So maybe it needed it. Maybe it needed both. Um, but you'll notice with the delay bank, uh, the wet is turned to about 50%. So it's actually more subtle. So I'm assuming that I probably used the fruity delay too for specific timing. And then the delay bank is probably just to kind of boost it up. That's what I'm assuming. Um, and for some of these mixer tracks, you also notice that I played around with the equalizer here. Like this is also an, e an EQ area, right? This is the low end, mid, high end. 
And you notice that even here, I play around with it a little bit. Even though I already equalized it here, right? Sometimes you'll see me do extra equalizing here, right? And But usually here, it'll be more subtle. Like you notice it's not as extreme as it is here because the extreme equalizing is already done. I just make subtle adjustments here, you know, because you kind of get the low end and mid area and high end all in one instead of how it's broken up here. Even though they have different presets to get it kind of similar to this, that's just how I do it sometimes. Because I, I, I just be doing shit, you know, just trying to see what sounds right. Um, let's see if anything else I need to talk about here. God damn, that, that woo came out good. That woo came out good. Ah! <laughs> that woo came out so good. God damn. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> That's the best part of the whole damn song. Okay, so anything else I need to talk about? I think I already hit mo most of the main points I wanted to. Um, now, there is this part here, but I don't think it's really important to so that's the second part of the hook but as you can see is pretty much edited the same way as the verses three vocals stacked on top of each other um you got a uh oh wait what the fuck is that I think that's the ha. It's like an ad lib note itself. Um, just check it out real quick, make sure. Yeah, it, it's basically edited the same way as the uh, verse, as the verses. It just has like a little delay on it. See, it's just a smidge of delay because it is supposed to be like a, a hook. An extension of the hook so that's why I put a little delay there not a lot it's only at like 20% oh, and that's leading into the second verse but it's, of course the second verse is very much edited the same way as the first verse just minor adjustments and again just going back to what i said earlier even within this, the same song um a lot of times what i notice is the the first verse and the second verse or third verse however many verses you got the way they're edited and mixed would be very similar, but sometimes you might have to make minute adjustments because especially with me, a lot of times I like to do like, like I like to add different effects or different sounds to the different verse parts of my beats. And as I do that, that creates a necessity for like a different, like, like different adjustments to be made for the various verses. Right, because a lot of times my verses, the verse areas of my beat don't sound the same. And that means my vocal is going to interact with that part of the beat differently. And so I have to make minor adjustments. Also, the way I spit the verse might be different. Like it might be a more chill verse. So I might have to turn it up a bit more. So again, just don't get caught up in the mindset of making, doing everything the exact same way. If something don't sound right, you probably got to make minor adjustments or even more extreme adjustments. It just uh, depends. And uh, yeah, that's that's really about it. That's mainly what I do as far as editing my vocals. Of course, you know, it, you know, the way I kind of wrapped it up makes it look easy, <laughs> easier than it, it, it can, it is, but or maybe I make it harder than it should be. I can't really tell sometimes, but yeah, that's pretty, that's the gist of my process for editing my vocals. Um, of course you also got, let me see just real quick, the intro, but 
That's pretty, you know, self explanatory. Eight, one, seven, six, in the cockpit, I was ready to go. Yeah, the uh, the intro just pretty much a lot of delay, <laughs> a lot of a lot of delay, a lot of reverb. See the reverb up at about damn fifty percent. Chorus sound goodizer cranked up to like three three dots. <laughs> um, the high end and low end turned down to give it kind of a, a kind of a radio sound. Um, but yeah, nothing crazy. Eight, two, one, seven, Oh yeah, and that little sample from Gundam Wing of the countdown. Uh, but you know, stuff like that, you can pretty much figure out on your own, like little intros and outros and whatnot. That's not too crazy. So um, yeah, I think that's about it. That's how I basically edit the Zaku song. Um, again, I don't do a lot of different shit. You know, it, it looks more complex than it actually is. But now I will admit, you know, like, arranging everything in here can be kind of crazy you know and that's uh yeah that can be kind of like, like having, having everything nice and organized and neat but that's why you gotta label everything you notice everything is labeled intro hook one hook two hook three hook four hook ad lib verse a verse b verse c verse c ad libs hook ex the extended hook shit like that and you know these are little like uh automation clips for like minor adjustments of effects and whatnot so yeah that's the that's how i edited my zaku vocals i hope you guys got something out of that i hope it helps you in the future as far as editing your own vocals and whatnot i probably might even do a video where i show myself recording at the actual recording process that'll be cool so uh yeah chat marco checking out but only temporarily. <laughs> Stay tuned.